Inside this video right here, I'm gonna explain to you step by step how to master drug cards, how to make drug card quizzes easier, and how to understand the drugs that you're learning in class. Let's go. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, what's going on? It's Paramedic Coach here, back at you with another video. If you're new here, real quick, go down below right now, click subscribe, and make sure to hit the notification bell. We do giveaways, we do lessons, lectures, we do hot topics here at the Paramedic Coach inside of EMS. And everyone watching this video right now, make sure to hit the like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm share this video with more EMS providers so they can see content like this so we can all learn. Now, the reason I made this video today, I woke up this morning and had a burning desire I want to share this with you is drug cards. Now this right here is a drug card of, of epinephrine right here. Now the first thing I want to do is tip number one. And tip number one talks about this. If we understand the mechanism of action, the MOA of a drug, you'll see, I'm going to show you right here, how a drug card automatically gets filled in. I believe the reason why so many paramedic students struggle with drug cards is they're trying to say, okay, I got to remember this whole card. If you start with each drug and you know, okay, Epi acts on alpha-1, beta-1, beta-2 as an agonist. Okay, low pressure is a beta-1 selective, but we're going to get some crossover effect to beta-2 as a beta blocker, as an antagonist. See, if you know the MOA, you know when to give it, when not to give it, and that's how we get more familiar with these drugs that when we first start class, we have no idea what they are, okay? Now, if you're watching with a paramedic coach, I always tell you to prep before you go in, okay? The second reason why I feel like a lot of people struggle with drug cards is they have no awareness of these drugs whatsoever before they enter school. So, if right now I asked you, what is succocholine? What is Atomidate? What is Versed? What is Ativan? What is Benadryl? What is Reglan? What is Zofran? I mean, I keep going on and on. Are you even aware of what those drugs even are given for? And if you have no idea at all, and you have no idea of the class of the drug, of course, when I give you that drug on a Tuesday and give you a quiz on a Thursday, it could be a lot harder than if you watch this drug card video right now on this drug and you have this whole drug down. You have an awareness level of it. Then when your instructor teaches you in class, man, it really sticks even more. Now in most EMS systems, there's usually about 40 or so drugs that you have to know on your protocol sheet to be a paramedic, and as well as a national standards, you gotta know these sets of drugs. So in this video right here, I'm gonna break down epinephrine. Epi is an alpha-1, beta-1, and beta-2 agonist. Remember, an agonist is something that binds to that receptor that we're speaking of. An antagonist blocks a receptor. So epinephrine is an agonist. Low pressure is a antagonist, okay? This is an agonist. It's going to activate, turn on that receptor, bind that receptor. So we know alpha-1 is going to cause massive vasoconstriction, thus increasing the blood pressure. Beta-1, we have one heart. It's going to increase the heart rate and the contractility. What's that? The strength of contractions. Beta-2 is going to dilate, bronchodilate, open up the lung fields. Okay, so your bronchioles, we know about that, right? Your bronchi tree is going to open so you can breathe better. That's why it's a sympathomimetic, okay? Your sympathetic nervous system, you're going to get increased heart rate. You're going to get increased blood pressure. You're going to get uh, your, uh, the opening up of your lung. This is why this drug is a sympathomimetic. It mimics that activation of your sympathetic nervous system, okay? Think about it. 
If we activate our sympathetic nervous system and it's mimicking that, what do we get? Well, we get dilated pupils, increased blood pressure, increased heart rate, and bronchodilation. There it is. If this drug opens up the lung fields, wouldn't it make sense to give it an asthma or anaphylaxis we have, or we have bronchoconstriction and it's tight so we can open it? That makes sense. Wouldn't it make sense, because we know this drug is an alpha-1 vasoconstrictor to be given in cardiac arrest, wouldn't it make sense for this drug because an alpha-1 constrictor to be given in severe, severe hypotension states? Wouldn't that make sense? Wouldn't it make sense to give this drug to people that have a severe bradycardia where other drugs haven't worked? So that's why the indication for this drug, now I, I, I kind of fell out of room here, but going through them, epinephrine can be used for severe bradycardias as a drip. It can be used for um, severe hypotension as a drip. It can be given as an intramuscular um, shot for anaphylaxis, so IM, okay, for acute asthma. And then obviously you have cardiac arrest. Now let's talk about contraindications. Obviously if there's an allergy to a drug, we're not gonna give it, we get that. But think about this. If we know it's an alpha-1 agonist and a beta-1 agonist, it's gonna increase the blood pressure, increase the heart rate. We would not give epi a contraindication for a tag cardia or a hypertensive emergency. That would be hurting our patient. It's a contraindication. Let's talk about adverse effects. If I'm gonna increase your heart rate, you may go into a tachycardia, you may get a little anxious, palpitations, tremor. Those are all normal things, right? So there's your um, adverse effects. Now finally here we have dosing. Now dosing is obviously different, but the main dose we're gonna talk about, the two most common ones in EMS, is a cardiac arrest dose, which is one to 10,000 epi, and then you have one to 1,000 epi. The only difference, same drug, it's the amount of liquid, the solution that it's stored in. One is one to 10,000, one is one to 1,000. It's the concentration, that's the only difference, okay? And the reason for this is very simple. If I give, I can't put this much fluid, okay? I can't put that much fluid inside of an intramuscular injection, okay? IV's different, okay? That is one of the reasons why it's like this, okay? Now, 0 0.3 milligrams is gonna be your IM injection, also that's for an EpiPen as well, okay? Split that dose for an EpiPen for a pediatric. Now, moreover about the pediatric dose of Epi is usually, and I'm gonna write it down here, is usually, I'll put it up here, 0 0.01 milligrams per kilogram. Now every area is different, but that's a good rule of thumb, and you obviously don't want to exceed any adult dose, of course. That's a good rule of thumb for every single action of epi. It's a good rule of thumb, okay? Now, following cardiac arrest, one milligram, one to 10,000 IVIO, very simple. Now, here's my special consideration with epinephrine. You have a patient. Let's say it's a respiratory patient, acute asthma. You're giving continuous NEBS. They're already getting tachycardic because we know, and now you know, albuterol or levobuterol acts on a beta-2 receptor. When we act in the beta-2 receptor, we get a crossover in a beta-1. So we get tachycardia already. So imagine we have an elderly patient who has a history of cardiac disease. And we're treating them for their asthma. And they're elderly. Do we give them epi? and it further increase the tachycardia and further increase the, the workload in the heart? How bad is this asthma? What do we do? That's a special consideration. It's not a contraindication. It's a special consideration. So this is your entire drug card for epinephrine. And this right here is everything you gotta know to pass your quiz. Now, if you enjoyed this drug card breakdown of epinephrine, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you get a lot of value out of this. I have a video vault where I have all 44 EMS drugs, all the RSI drugs, all the sedatives, all the cardiac drugs. You can name a drug, it's in there. I've put it into one vault. It's like there's a drug card breakdown from the MOA all the way down to the specials on every single drug card you need to know in EMS. Any drug card that you may get quizzed on 
in paramedic school. So if you're one of these two people, if you're prepping for school right now, or you're currently in paramedic school, you need help with drug cards, I'm gonna click the link down below, you get access to my video vault, but you're not only gonna get access to, I call it my EMS medications mastery, which is 44 EMS drugs in that little mini course, I'm gonna give you 180 videos in my entire video vault from EMT to paramedic for only a one-time payment. The link is down below, we'll see learn more, you can see all the details about it, but I, I really, I cannot tell you enough, I wish I had a resource like this back when I was in Mexico, I didn't have one. I don't want it to be you. I want you to get ahead of the game. There's no reason for things like drug cards to be hard. I want you to get through this kind of work, that school work, that class work, easier, so you can focus, which is most important, which is taking care of your patients and getting to become a better medic, a better advanced EMT, a better EMS provider out in the field. Let's take care of this stuff right now. Click the link down below, click learn more, and let's knock out these drug cards. I'm gonna give you all 44 to one time payment, no monthly payment. I will see you inside. Cap, oh, like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these all these you know links inside my brain and I, I just knew right then and there um, I have to have this program I have to have all the information that he's willing to give I need all of it I went through it I, I spent the time and money in other areas and I'm, I'm just gonna let you guys know that uh, this was everything I was searching for the whole time the first couple of videos I watched um, when I noticed it, it just I, I just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasped. Went on there that I continued reviewing and I did it for about a month and you know it, it helped a lot. Like I said even after school and I took that test one time and I passed it. Your particular program you have your students engaging and you have your students discussing and you have your students actually using your products and I'm seeing time and time again um, students that are coming in and announcing their new certification with national registry Olds obviously passing the exam doing it pretty quickly 70 questions in about an hour um well you definitely are like how your videos are like i wasn't sure how it was going to be but you are how you, your videos are so that was awesome so people who are getting ready for paramedic school or if you're getting ready to go in the navy as a corpsman or as an army medic um you got to prepare yourself. Evan, I know you got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is, guys, you don't ever want to hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't want to hear about AFib for the first time where everybody else, you want to have an understanding of it before you walk in the room. From 120 questions, passing two sections, um, near passing one, and then I think two below passing to seven questions passing completely thousand seven thousand dollars for school plus everything else that you put into it all the time and all the time off work and family and everything it's to see people fail and fail and fail and then just quit which i know a couple of people who have i tend to say you know it doesn't hurt to have somebody right there to talk to you know send a question anytime i get the chance i'll, I'll gladly offer or advise them to sign up for you and your paramedic coach. It's, it's truly helpful and amazing at what you do. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.